Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And we've got some big news. Toolkit's gone. It's all about Land Investing Flight Club. If you want more details about Land Investing Flight Club, email support at thelandgeek.com. Scott Todd, are you excited about Land Investing Flight Club? Mark, I think that uh, land investing flights, flight class, what is it, flight simulator? Flight, flight club. Flight club. Right. This thing is going to turn like typical information marketing upside down because, you know, typical information marketing is here, you know, good, good luck to you and, and ho hope you do well. In fact, I was on eBay just before we started recording this and I was looking up a, uh, a course, like just Googling this, you know, like searching for this name. I found a course online, not yours, by the way, but another one. I found a course online. It's half the price. Everything is still sealed. They never even opened it. So it just shows like, you know, people buy stuff with the best of intention. And unless they're forced to take action and learn it, it just ends up on eBay. No, there's no longer a knowledge gap. It's an execution gap. And we're going to fill that in with Land Investing Flight Club. In case you don't know who my co-host is, it's Scott Todd from scotttodd.net land at moto.com and most importantly if you're not automating your craigslist ads hosting domination.com forward slash the land geek and scott and todd i have to tell you today's guest is really really going to be great i i'm i'm excited before we even got started today uh, we we uh, were talking and i'm already laughing <laughs> and having a good time so i can't wait to see the, where this one goes yeah this one's gonna be great so Let's talk about Kevin Rogers from copychief.com, 60secondsaleshook.com. And, and Kevin used to be a dead broke stand-up comedian until he discovered how a simple joke formula could be used as a powerful marketing hook and began teaching it to marketers. This is crazy. Kevin Rogers, how are you? Good, man. Thanks for having me, guys. It's a, I'm looking forward to this as well. Okay, so Kevin, let's let's pretend we're at the nightclub right now. How how do you start? Like, like what 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 was your routine clean? Even like this is pretty clean. Oh, you mean like at the comedy club? Uh, yeah. No, it wasn't clean. No, uh, I was I was you know eighteen years old when I started comedy. So uh, uh, every you know, my thoughts were uh, not far above my waist at any given time. <laughs> so, so, so most, that, that's what you knew. That's what I knew. Although what's interesting is the comics that I still keep in contact with, that hasn't changed. <laughs> They're all in their forties now, fifties. That hasn't. So I don't know if it has anything to do with how old I was, but uh, yeah. So you know, I was a storyteller, and uh, that's still what I enjoy. I love telling stories, and that's what I did on stage. You know, I would just kind of act out scenarios introduce crazy characters and uh, it was a lot of fun man so when when did you make that leap or that transition where you, th where you said you know what i gotta make some money here yeah, like, yeah. enough with having fun at the club and i've got something here because marketing is all about telling stories so mm -hmm. how, did that, how did that happen well i had no idea you know when i was a stand-up all i knew for sure i didn't have a lot of business sense back then uh, I didn't, I was just a kid feeling like I was committing the crime of the century by getting paid a few hundred bucks. Uh, I wasn't factoring in the time and, and, and money it would cost me to drive 400 miles to go tell 30 minutes of jokes. I was just going, Hey, they're going to pay me 400 bucks, you know? Uh, and I get uh, free beer and attention from girls. It's the greatest thing ever. But then, you know, you start growing up and thinking, now ah, this is getting lonely. You know, I was on the road for like seven years straight and uh, I didn't want to become an old, bitter comic with no options in life. And that's what I saw happening to a lot of really brilliant people. And I realized the show business is a lottery, right? So I gave myself till 30. I said, if, if I hit 30, if I'm in, you know, I don't, things aren't clicking because I didn't feel at all like I do now, like I could control my fate, right? Uh, we know as entrepreneurs that we have a lot of control over how our worlds uh, go, how our business goes. Back then, I just thought, if the right people don't like me, this isn't going to happen. 
And so uh, that's what happened, man. I got to like, uh, you know, th- uh, climb it up on 30 and I tried a few different things. I was kind of over the stage thing and wanted to write more and uh, went out to Hollywood and got very close to some staff writing gigs on sitcoms. And once, once I saw the sauces being made in that world, it, it was very unappealing to me. And so uh, I took a series of like no, no resume jobs. You know, I was doing stuff like bartending and bell hopping. And uh, finally, like a, like a miracle, discovered this direct response copywriting thing. And man, you know, just like lightning struck for the second time in my life. And I realized this is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. And it actually wasn't in, until I was a couple years into it that I started to put together how much spending a decade as a stand-up comic, you know, played into the strengths you would have as a copywriter. So now I teach about those parallels, but it took me a while. It wasn't like, hey, you know, I've, I've been doing the stand-up thing and that'll lead perfectly into copywriting. I had no idea copywriting was a thing. I just happened to uh, sort of stumble upon it and was like, oh man, you know, Eureka, this is it. Scott Todd. You know, I, I think, uh, I think that, you know, like, like you're saying, like, like lightning hit twice for you and that's, that's awesome. But how, like, what, what is the, what is like that formula? Like you talked about the formula in, in writing. What is this formula? The formula, which one for, um, like copywriting, like wh- yeah. how do I, how do I, you know, I'm, I'm not a f- phenomenal uh, copywriter by any means. It's not my skill set. I can, I can write some things and I have found like a, a little formula that I use, but I'd love to learn a little bit more about your formula too. Well, I actually have a lot of formulas for different things, depending on what you want to accomplish. I do love formulas, which is ironic because as a comic, the last thing you'd ever want to be called is formulaic. You know, you want to be off the cuff and original and in the moment. But when I came, when I had to start writing for a living, and getting stuff out, I realized I need some guardrails here. You know, you could sit and, you know, it's an art and a science and it's a practice. And uh, if you just stay on the art side of it too long, it's very hard to meet deadlines. So um, I have a lot of different formulas for, for depending on what you want to accomplish, everything from like a full sales letter. Uh, I really love short formulas, you know, one minute, two minute video formulas. Uh, I, thing I'm most passionate about is helping business owners tell their story in very, you know, clear and succinct ways that immediately uh, help their best prospects identify themselves as their best prospects. So, you know, like one of the, one of the things that I try to do, because look, most of, most of, I think the people listening to this podcast most uh, are interested in like land, land investing, selling land. That's, that's where Mark and I, uh, spend our time is actually doing land deals and, you know, l- land is a pretty boring thing to sell. You know, like there, it's, mm-hmm. there's nothing sexy about land at all. It's, it's dirt, right? right. Yeah. Some, sometimes some tumbleweed and it's hard to like write just a boatload of, of material. And what I always try to do with my own ads is not necessarily reveal the whole thing in like a sales letter where I'm trying to sell it on Craigslist or the marketing and, you know, I always even talk about or joke about like, it's, that's like the first day, you know, like you're, that marketing piece is not meant to sell everything. It's meant right. to, to be, a, you know, a mystery and to get someone to raise their hand. That's a really is, good point. Yeah. yeah. Is that yeah. something that you see like a lot of people doing is they try to like, yes. Use- yeah. Todd, you, 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 you landed on the number one, uh, conversion killer that I talk about, you know, people always ask me about headlines. Oh, I know headlines are important. What makes a good headline? Uh, A lot of things make a good headline. There's a lot of great formulas for headlines as well. The first thing that makes a terrible headline is trying to close the deal in the headline, right? Or, you know, very early in the copy or sometimes, like you said, even on the page at all. Anymore, it's a stepped awareness to bring people into our world, right? You know, the dynamic has changed a lot. It used to be you could write a you know, a 20 page sales letter and lay out your entire sales argument and do really well. You can still do that in some markets. Finance is one where people will really sit and read a ton of material. They really want to be on the cutting edge. Um, anymore, you know, people come to your opportunity for the most part on a mobile device. 
right? So you have to factor that in right there. What, what are you going to, you're not going to sit and read a long scrolling sales letter uh, on your mobile device. You're probably also not going to watch a 20, 30, 40 minute uh, video sales letter. Uh, so you need to engage people in short increments that, you know, real, come with more like a radio commercial, what really lends, you know, gets their attention and gets them to say, this is something I need. Uh, and gets them to take the next action and, and engage deeper with you, right? You can't just close the deal in one, one shot anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, speaking of, of radio commercials, before the, the podcast, you guys are talking about this crazy guy in your, <laughs> in your area. And um, I think it's really interesting the way that this guy is marketing. Yeah. And, um, because there's an authenticity to it, right? So right. kind of talk about what this guy does, and let's pick it apart. So like Mark, I, I, uh, I've talked about him on this podcast before. I know even in uh, J- January at the boot camp that we had, uh, I was actually talking about this guy again. And pe- literally like four people gathered around and they all knew him. And they weren't people in Florida, like New York and up north, because this is a Kia dealer. He's got uh, car dealerships in New York. He's got three in Florida. And he's like the largest Kia dealer in North America or the world. I don't know which one down in, in Cape Coral, Florida, but he also has a location here in the Tampa area where uh, Kevin and I are, are based. And, you know, basically his ads are, you know, he's just rambling about nothing talking about the deals that he's doing, you know, like I'm going to give you give away a cruise or, you know, we're going to party. He talks about, you know, dinners and restaurants and drinking and partying and these big lavish meals he's eating. And he ends every ad with it's huge. You know, and it's and, be huge, Tampa. Yeah, you got, he's, you got the he, voice down exactly. He, well, he's famous now for this huge thing. And uh, it, what's interesting about the guy to me is uh, when the commercial starts, it's a pattern interrupt. You ever heard that term before? You know, something we use in advertising a lot is like to get people's attention. You have to take them out of what they're expecting, right? And that's what this guy does so masterfully. It's like the commercial starts and the guys, like, like, like Todd said, he's just rambling. So he'd be like, Carolyn, Carolyn, I was here till two in the morning last night. We're still putting a bunch of Kias out the door. You know, we're writing deals till two in the morning. And then we went for, you know, we, uh, we ordered pizza and we stayed up till five in the morning. We had a couple bottles of wine. You know, <laughs> like what, what is happening? It sounds like they started, the, you know, they played the wrong tape or something. You know? yeah. Yeah. And then in the last 10 seconds ago, so get yourself down here. We're giving away a whole truckload of Kias. Like to one person, they're giving away like a whole truck, like eight, yeah. key- eight Kias to one guy. Who needs eight cars? <laughs> <laughs> like, this is no logic to any of it, but you, it, it's like a, you can't not listen, right? Every time my son and I drive around, you know, doing this impression and it, it, he's become a character in people's lives. And like Todd said, you bring it up, and he's known in any, any region where he's advertising, people stop and listen to this guy. And so that's, a, that's an important lesson. It's like sometimes being the furthest thing from conventional you can be is the, is the most effective thing you can do. And, you know, you can only assume that this, this evolved for this guy over time. He probably, you know, hired voice actors to say, come on, come on this weekend and you'll get five, you know, the best deals on Kias that you see all oh, weekend long. And, you know, like, and then you just go and realize, like nobody cares, like nobody's listening. And he's like, just give me the microphone. Let me do it. Let me tell you something right now. You want huge, I'll give you huge. <laughs> and, you know, like, what is, and uh, so sometimes like, for, don't, you know, be yourself. If you're like crazy or outrageous, the more comfortable you can be. Like, if I want to buy land, Ty, you were saying like land is boring, right? Yeah. So, if I'm thinking, all right, what, what's a land deal? Like, it's just talking to you guys right now. It's fascinating to me. I already want to learn more because to me, it does sound kind of sexy. It's like, you know what I love about land? Like, it's dirt. I don't, it means that there's probably less people I have to deal with, right? Because yeah. it's dirt. If you're realtor selling houses and everything, oh my God, you got to, you got to have an open house and talk to all these people who are just like, you know, nosing around. They're never being interested. Land to me is like, this is great. You know, I would get a clump of dirt that I know is going to increase in value and I, and I wisely invest in this or however it works. But um, if, if it now, so if I got like five people I can choose to learn how to do land deals from, I want this guy going, come over here. If nothing else, I'm going to sit down with this guy and laugh my head off. 
Landfills aren't for me, right? I might as well go with the colorful character. Yeah, this guy, is fin- this guy is phenomenal. You know, like, because, look, we're talking about him. Other people are talking about him. He, we're giving him free publicity. Maybe we could charge him. Maybe we need to get him on the empire. Yeah, but, but, but think about it. Like, this guy's, you know, doing something. Because we we're, we're inundated. We're inundated with these marketing, marketing messages, right? They fill up our Facebook feeds. They're everywhere. They're on LinkedIn. They're, are, they're in social media. They're, they're literally permeating in every aspect of our lives, right? We, we can't go anywhere now without seeing an ad, right? Um, Google gives us all this free stuff just to, 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 to target us better and, and advertise us better. Same thing with Facebook. So this guy has created a way to break through the noise. And, and Kevin, how do you break through the noise? Dude, I'll tell you the weirdest thing. You mentioned about Google um, and all that. It's how is like how our phones make suggestions to us. Isn't that bizarre? You know, like, like Google just watches everything we do. And like based on our search uh, history, they just make suggestions. And it gets, it's weird because there's other people using Google in my house. You know, like I have kids, they're searching for stuff. And then Google gets all that confused, you know. The other day it had recommended to me a gentleman's club featuring a dancer uh, named Dora the Explorer. <laughs> So that was bizarre, you know what I mean? Like I wouldn't, I went. I mean, it was good, but you know, like normal. That, but, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. So, <laughs> what was your question? I saw. I right, yeah. went to sneak a joke, and I had to go. That uh, was phenomenal. It was about the like. Can can we actually like? Can we write a pattern interrupt? You know, pattern is great for you know TV, commercial, radio. But can we write a pattern interrupt to like? Is that just in the headline or how, how do I execute on them? Yeah, it's a good question. It works best with video, which you have to be careful of is you're not, you, it doesn't turn into sleight of hand, right? So you don't, it's not about promising one thing and then sort of tricking people into it being something else. The other thing you don't want to do is, is say, have some outrageous question and then say like in an email, right? Your subject line would be something like, uh, you know, a million dollars a minute income question mark and then they open the email and says well no not really but you don't want yeah. to do that somebody's that just blows trust immediately right yeah. so it's not, it's not about hype but it works really great in video you know a pattern interrupt would be you know some of the things that have become sort of hackneyed now that used to work really well was you know um you'd click on the video and it'd be a picture of like a platypus you know and they'd say this is a platypus and this particular platypus uh eats only whatever, whatever, whatever. And uh, believe it or not, this is the key to you finally uh, earning that extra income that you've been searching for online. And in a minute, I'm going to explain how this platypus could be there. And you're going, all right, well, now you're kind of interested. It's a way to hook you in, right? So that, that'd be one way to have a pattern interrupt. Um, just, you know, something that people aren't expecting, really. Yeah, you're intrigued. How can a platypus mean financial freedom for me? Exactly. And how many times can we say platypus before the FTC uh, <laughs> investigates? Yeah. 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 So, all right. So Kevin, I once got some early advice about hiring a copywriter and someone said to me, Mark, a good copywriter writes good copy. A great copywriter writes good copy. That sounds like you. Do uh-huh. you agree with that statement? I like that. Um, yeah, I would say there's some other qualifications, but that, that is, uh, that is very good. Yes. What, what are the other qualifications? Uh, well, a good, a great copywriter to me, it's, it's the enthusiasm and the energy they bring to the project, right? You know, uh, one of the biggest disconnects business owners have about hiring copywriters is this idea that, they're handing off the job of getting the copy written to this person. You know, you can hire a vendor, but go to Fiverr and find somebody to just type for you because that's not what a copywriter does. A copywriter, you know, devotes a month of their life to digging into your product, to really understanding what you do, to learning about you, your personal story. They bring a lot of energy and enthusiasm. It's almost like becoming a method actor in a sense, right? You're taking on this role and part of that is really nailing the voice of the expert you're writing for. So 
yeah, that is a big part of it. That that's one good qualifier. And I'm glad you brought it up because that is one of the biggest uh, points of friction business owners have when it comes to hiring a copywriter is I, I don't feel like they're going to nail my voice or I don't trust them with my voice and I don't want it to feel like something I'm not. Right. Right. And then Scott Todd, have you ever tried to hire a copywriter? I have. And uh, you know, I kind of never really put the effort into like executing fully on it. You know, like it's just something I've tried and you hit some resistance and then you pull back a little bit. Yeah. So Kevin, I mean, the problem with copywriters is that it seems like there's no shortage of them. Prices are all over the place and it's yeah. like hiring a dentist, right? Like you almost need a referral because if yeah. I do dental work for you, right, you won't know if it's good or bad, right? Until yeah. right. another dentist looks in your mouth and says, Hey, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a lousy crown, Kevin Rogers, or the copy gets written you put it out to the world and you don't get any conversions. And then you're like, well, is it the copy? Is it right. my list or is it my offer? Because these are three things. It's not like we can't just blame the copywriter because yeah. if we have a lousy offer, well, it doesn't matter. That could be the best copy in the world. Right? Yeah, so exactly right. Yeah. That's the danger in just hiring a copywriter. What you really want is a copy, someone who is not just a copywriter, they're a marketing expert with copywriting as their specialty, right? That's what you really want. Um, and, you know, look, if, if you're a really dialed in marketer and your campaigns convert well and you are your own best copywriter and you simply want to bring in somebody who can take that work off your desk and maybe bring some extra punch to it, because they're just a better writer, because it's their living, uh, then that's a good time to just hire a copywriter. You can just do it based on their ability, their experience. However, most business owners need a lot of help with marketing. Like you said, Mark, it's not just a, uh, uh, it's not a, they think they have a copy problem when oftentimes what they have is an offer problem. And, you know, my buddy, Brian Kurtz, who was one of the most uh, advanced direct response marketers in the world. He sent billions of pieces of mail uh, over his 30 year career. And he breaks it down into 40, 40, 20, 40% 40 list, 40% offer and 20% copy. Now as a copywriter, you think I should be up in arms going, that's crazy. It should be at least a 30, 30, 30 split. It's he's hundred percent right because look, you know, without that 20%, without the right copy, you're not going to sell like you should, but, the best copywriting in the world, sending the wrong offer to the wrong list doesn't stand a chance. You won't get one sale. And yeah, yeah, Scott, I, I, I've been calling you Todd. I want to apologize for that. No problem. Fully aware that your name is Scott now that I see it on my screen. Oh, good. By the way, Kevin, you're the first person ever to make that mistake. Yeah. Well, ever. you got to nope. walk around with two first names. You got a 50-50 chance of people getting it right. Yeah. You, you knew the odds coming in, Scott. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Now, how often does that happen? We don't, we don't even correct people anymore. It happens so often. It, it, it happens so much. I didn't realize people are doing it. Yeah. Right. I'm conscious. So, okay. So I'm, I'm writing an ad, right. For a piece of land. I want to, I want to try to, you know, sell, or maybe I'm, I'm making a website or, um, you know, maybe a squeeze page, right? And I'm kind of lost and I've got this whole world. I can go to Upwork and go to Fiverr. I can go to copychief.com, mm -hmm. right? At what point do I say, I need a professional here and I'm willing to pay for it because if I invest X amount, my ROI will be this amount, right? Yeah. Like how, how do you even, Absolutely. Like how do you even qualify the right people to do this, to go well, and to get a copywriter? It's, I love the way you state your questions because you include part of the good answer in it. I mean, if that, if somebody can do what you just said and say, here's where I am now. So that means you have an offer live uh, and you know the current conversion rate, then that is a great time to go seek a professional copywriter because now you can say to them, here's the deal. Come look at my campaign. Here's, here's the funnel. Here's all the pieces of it. You know, X amount of people who come to these ads are buying and I want someone to come in and make 
X times two times three, that amount of people buy instead. Do you think that's possible? And they can look at it and assess it and say, yes, I think it's possible. I think I know what to do to make this, these ads convert even better. And I might suggest that we also do, a, you know, three other things that'll improve the, the funnel. Um, and then it's about, a, it's about, you know, willingness to partner on the project for, on both sides. Again, there's a lot of anxiety around thinking of this as a one night stand, a one off thing. It's like, you know, I'm just going to hire this stranger to write some stuff and then hopefully it'll convert. That's not the way to do it. You, you, let's have a, a, a 90 day partnership where we're going to accomplish uh, the major part of writing an ad or rewriting an ad. And then we're going to stay together uh, over the cycle of this ad to see, all right, is it converting better? Like we hoped uh, if, not let's fix it and, and get it to where it is converting and then once it is converting as well as we think it, it can how do we make it convert even better what else can we do what other channels what other mediums can we start to explore to bring people in uh, another way um, it's you know and the truth is it's actually less expensive and certainly less risky to do it that way because part of that agreement can be a revenue share where the copywriter is being based you know, being paid partly on percentage of, of new sales. So you're really only paying out what you're earning in addition to what you're earning already. There's no reason for you to hand over, you know, 10 grand to a copywriter on, uh, on an offer that's, you know, producing, you know, $20,000 a month and hope that they improve the exact same offer that, they, you know, just with new copy, right? Uh, you could do that. It's it's not a bad investment, but so much better uh, to create a short-term partnership and it could turn into a long-term partnership, but you need a copywriter in your life. You don't just need to hand over your copy to somebody and hope it works. I love it. I love it. So what is the biggest mistake that you see entrepreneurs making when they go through this process? Is it just the mindset that, hey, I'm going to hand it over to you? Yeah make it work or is it is it twofold is it that the copywriter doesn't understand that market and the entrepreneur isn't explaining it well not willing to put in the time to give them the proper research that they need so 85 percent of copy like you said in the beginning is, is really you know spending a lot of time just understanding the market and trying to nail down yes. your voice right so it's a lot of research involved so I could, I could see a lot of entrepreneurs who are super busy. Like, yeah. Oh, Evan, I don't, I don't have time to, to even, yeah. you know, even do my books this week. How am I going to spend 30 days right. with a copywriter? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Carlin. I was up to four in the morning with this copywriter. He's asking me all kinds of questions, and I said, just tell him it's huge. Yeah, the, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's the thing. It's like you can't have it all, right? I mean, you can have, what, what's, the whole, what's the old thing? You, you, you know, fast, uh, fast, good, and cheap, pick two, right? Um, you know, you just can't, you can't have it all. And that's the other thing about having a long-term scenario. Uh, even if, you know, 30 days is the minimum it'll take to get a good ad out of somebody. But if you uh, can arrange a, a longer-term situation, it, you don't have to devote a ton of time in the beginning to, to get it done, right? So you don't have this like intense 30 day deadline where it's like, you got to give a copywriter time. So if you're too busy to raise your conversions with better copy, then again, hiring a copywriter to, to, to fill that gap of, and, and expect them to do the things that you're not willing to do to improve is ludicrous. You should just save your money. But here's the thing, like you said, Mark, a lot of people will take that deal. There's a lot of, it seems like there's a ton of copywriters in there. Believe me, there's not a ton of good copywriters out there. There's very few because I have way more requests for copywriters than I have copywriters to recommend. Uh, you know, there is a lot of people out there calling themselves copywriters because they read a couple of books and they decided this is what they love, but they are not willing to have these kinds of partnerships uh, and they don't, you know, they're not looking to spend a lot. It's, it's like lawn service, right? You know, you can hire someone to uh, really come in and landscape and like design your, your whole landscape 
and, and lovingly put in the, the plants and the flowers and care for it and nurture it, right? Or you can hire the cheapest guy you can get to come push his mower over your lawn and his objective is to get in and out as fast as possible so he can, you know, complete as many lawns that day as he can and, uh, you know, then go get himself a new Kia. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the difference. I mean, you, you know, how well do you want to do? Look, if you're just starting out and you need some help, what I recommend is put aside 30 minutes three times a week and study some copy, you know, take a course, you know, learn how this stuff works because you can, you can't recognize if you're getting good copy, good work out of your copywriter, unless you understand at least the fundamentals of what good copy is. All right. So Scott Todd, are you, are you ready to hire? Copy? I'm, I'm ready. Like I, I'm ready right now. <laughs> I got yeah. some. I got some great, great ideas just uh, from this about making dirt interesting. So, yeah, I mean, and Kevin, from your from your business standpoint, you're kind of like uh, you know one of those just lunch people. Like, I'm just going to connect you with somebody. Yeah. Yes, you're basically, yes. You're, you're basically like the dating service for Kevin. Yeah, it's become that. Yeah, I embrace it. You know, be, but the interesting thing is it it started out like that because there was just such a great need. You know, I had copywriters asking me how to get better clients. I had business owners asking me where all the good copywriters were. And what I found out was uh, sometimes I'd connect people and it work out great. Other times I'd connect them and it would fall apart. And I realized both parties need better education about how to work well together. And so that's my little niche in the world is like, I want to help business owners and copywriters understand the process so that they can do great work together. It doesn't have to be, it's not only for people with a, with a huge cash drawer to, to dip into and pay, you know, everybody's got cash flow issues, man. I get that. But if you're willing to invest in a relationship and share uh, part of the booty that you guys create together, then you can definitely have a great copywriter in your life. You just have to understand what that partnership looks like and be willing to uh, invest in it. All right. Fantastic. Well, Scott Todd, are, are we, are we ready to put Kevin on the spot? I think so. Let's go. All right, Kevin Rogers. What is your tip of the week? A website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income model listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? Besides the key of dealership. Well, I do have something huge. It's huge. I do have something huge. This, <laughs> uh, I got a thing I did. As I mentioned, I was a stand-up comic, right? And then I came into copywriting. So what I did was I looked back over, started getting really interesting in, in the science of joke telling and what makes people laugh, right? And I started to discover these joke formulas that are pervasive. Uh, and so I took one of those and I just changed the last part of it and made it into a sales hook formula. It's really cool. So everybody understands jokes and how jokes work. This is a lot like just writing a little joke about yourself, but instead of having a wacky twist at the end or having a, you know, you're not trying to get a laugh, uh, instead of the surprise that would normally lead to the laughter, we just change that part to result. And you talk about the results that your discovery led to. Okay, so you want me to walk you through it real quick or is that too long yeah. for this? No, no, no go, go ahead. All right, so here's how it goes. The joke formula is what I call the persona joke formula. It goes like this. It's, like, it's four parts. It's identity, struggle, discovery, surprise. All right, one of my favorite examples is a, a comedian named Karen Rontowski. And the first time she was on Letterman, this was her opening joke. She said, uh, my kids were so bad in Walmart today that I pulled a fly swatter off the shelf and I smacked them with it. And as soon as the fly swatter hit their ass, I realized I don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious, right? So that's, that's the exact formula. Identity, struggle, discovery, uh, surprise. Now, for us... All we have to do is change that last part and tell a different story. It's identity, struggle, discovery, result. Yeah? So, so mine would be to talk about this exact formula. I'd say, hey, I'm Kevin Rogers. You basically read mine, Mark, at the opening of the show. I say, I am Kevin Rogers. I spent years 
traveling around the United States as a dead broke stand-up comedian until I discovered how a simple joke formula could be turned into an irresistible sales hook and began teaching business owners how to use it to grow their, uh, improve their sales. Uh, and, you know, ever since then, uh, thousands of business owners have used this formula and the results of their business have been mind blowing. If you'd like to discover how you can use the same simple joke formula turned sales hook in your business for your messaging, simply enter your email below uh, and uh, hit give it to me and I'll see you on the next page. That's it, right? I mean, same exact formula, identity, who am I? What was I struggling with? For Karen, she has rowdy kids. The discovery for me is this, this parallel between messages. For her, it's a fly swatter. Uh, the, and the surprise for her is they're not even her kid she's beating. <laughs> and the result for me is that this formula does wonders for uh, people I teach it to, you know? And so, so that's it. Identity, struggle, discovery, result. And my resource is uh, the book I wrote that teaches this formula called The 60 Second Sales Hook. The beauty of it is that you can deliver this in under 60 seconds. We just had a challenge in, inside a copy chief in the members area where I challenged uh, some of the members to make these videos. And it's, uh, they did, they did a great job. It's really easy to do and it's fun. And uh, man, I tell you, there's nothing more powerful than a one minute video that shares your struggle and your passion and lets people know this is somebody I can relate to. Fantastic. Uh, Man, I, how do we compete against that, Mark? I, I don't know. I don't know. How much, <laughs> how much is your book, Kevin? It's free, man. 60 second? seconds. 60secondsaleshook.com. Or if you like spending money and you like paperback, you can't get it on Amazon for five bucks. But Wow. wow. My, my second favorite word after automation. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Look, Mark, I, I don't know how to compete against that. I mean, like, that's phenomenal, right? But here's, here's a resource. As we're talking about copywriting. Uh, here's a resource that everybody should go uh, look at, read. I've, I found them to be interesting reads. I'm sure Kevin knows all about them. It's the, the uh, Gary Halbert letters. You know about them, right? Oh, sure, yeah. So if, you, if you're new to, like, copywriting and you're looking to spend just a few minutes each, each every few days to learn – there's a, there's a wealth of free uh, content there. Just Google Gary Halbert letters. And uh, this, this is a series of letters that, that a world renowned copywriter wrote. Um, you know, there's always little tidbits that you can pick up from there. Again, you're not looking to be the expert here because you can hire a copywriter to do it. But uh, just as Kevin said, you want to be able to know like the, the basics in the, in the foundation and I think that's a great place to go get it. And it's free. I love it. I love it. So I've got two tips of the week. My first one is this is big news because we can actually hire Copy Chief to help us with our Facebook marketplace ads because Facebook is now looking to disrupt Craigslist. Oh, wow. We all know what a bear Craigslist can be. And Scott mm -hmm. Todd is like, oh no, now I'm going to create postingdomination.com for, for Facebook. Facebook. We, you know, we'll automate it. But if you don't have a good solid ad that gets yeah. attention, right? A-I-D-A. -A, attention, interest, decision, action. Desire, action. Yeah. Desire, action. Sorry, Kevin. Mm, sorry. Yeah. Um, then, you know, if you're, you're going to get lost in all the ads. Um, so that's my first tip of the week is definitely start exploring Facebook marketplace. My second tip of the week is don't waste time, right? Get some, so get yourself some powerful copy, right? Go to copychief.com, but don't forget to go to 60 second sales hook.com, right? 60. And that's, I'll have it on the links, by the way, 60 is the number mm -hmm. uh, six zero second is spelled out sales hook.com. And, uh, and learn more about Kevin and his uh, copywriting dating service. So. Yeah. Mark, how many calories did you burn during this interview? Um, did you I, you know, read out there in front of you? You know what's so funny is um, I'm going to get the new Apple Watch just so I can know because <laughs> I, uh, I had the, the Fitbit and yeah. my, my son took it. So I couldn't <laughs> tell you. Uh, I can tell you though, like 
I, I'm doing 10,000 steps before noon. Nice. Good right. for you. Because sitting's the new smoking, Kevin Rogers. It is, brother. Yeah, yeah. So um, are we good, Kevin? Yeah, we're good, man. This was a lot of fun. And uh, I want to know more about land deals. So uh, Yeah, you're going to learn more. I, can you help me with a quick 20-second spot for my new product called sure. Lone Geek? <laughs> Today's podcast is sponsored by Lone Geek in beta. Lone Geek helps you automate your loans. Set it and forget it and get paid. Kevin Rogers, is that a lousy 20 seconds plug? You know, when I first started doing loans, it was so tedious. It would take me all day just to get the paperwork together. And then I discovered Loan Geek. What's it called? <laughs> Loan Geek. You're right. Loan Geek. Okay, then, I damn it, I had it. Everything. <laughs> Then I discovered Loan Geek, and now I've got time to do all kinds of stuff, like go skinny dipping with the neighbors. <laughs> now, see, this is a this is the difference between an amateur and a professional, right? I think, I, honestly, I think you just nailed it on the head, like nail, like why I'm going to be hiring you, like, Mark, like after this podcast. And then you got to close with, "It's huge, Scott. It's huge." <laughs> Right, right. All right. So look, the only way we're going to get the, the uh, quality of guests like a Kevin Rogers from 60secondsaleshook.com and copychief.com is if you subscribe, rate, and review the podcast, please do so. It really does help. It really does. Don't make us beg. Um, and if you do so, send us a, a screenshot of the review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you the Passive Income Lunch Kit for free and an extra bonus for free, for for free, right? Can't be dead. Um, don't forget about Land Investing Flight School. Uh, that webinar is going to come out live very soon. Uh, register for it and see if you are ready to start getting passive income and getting results. Right, so we're flipping it. Right, home information courses, three percent success rate. Our coaching, right. 97%, right? You want to buy a lottery ticket or you want to get results? There's no longer a knowledge gap. It's an execution gap and we're here to fill it. Scott Todd, I couldn't be more excited. I'm, I can't wait, Mark. Eight weeks intensive group coaching. Get her done. Kevin Rogers, copychief.com, 67salesHook.com. Thanks again. Scott Todd, right. landmoto.com, scotttodd.net, postingdomination.com forward slash landgeek. Thank you. And give me some love. Go to thelandgeek.com. Download for free the Passive Income Blueprint. Get on the live webinar and see if the eight-week intensive land investing flight school is right for you. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. I'm Mark. Bye. See you.